All right, today we're going to talk about the language of equations in graphs. We're going to take one GED style question, and go deep uh, into understanding how graphs and equations work, how basically a graph and an equation say the same thing, but just in two languages. Like how I can say something in English, um, como en español, yo puedo... Uh, I'm going to stop myself right there because my Spanish is terrible. But um, just like how I can say things in English and Spanish and mean the same thing, that's graphs and equations. We're going to specifically focus on a y equals mx plus b problem. This is one of the um, formulas from the formula sheet. And hopefully I will have, by the end of 2074, um, I'll have finished all the videos on all of the different equations from the formula sheet, all the formulas. All right, let's get into it. Let's look at the question. Which graph matches the equation y equals negative one-third x minus one? Okay, so it's saying it in equation form here, and one of these four is the same thing, the right translation in graphic form. Um, well, uh, I don't speak both languages, so let's... Um, get deep into it and see if we can find any tricks to um, solving this. The first thing I'm always going to do on every possible problem is eliminate the wrong answers. So I'm looking for things that are wrong. Three of these are wrong. All right, well, here's the formula sheet they give you. Um, we're going to be focusing right here on this formula, y equals mx plus b. Ding! Uh, it's called the slope-intercept form of the equation. If you made it through, let's say, ninth grade uh, geometry, you probably in encountered this. This is one of the famous uh, equations. And if you didn't, that's okay. It's pretty simple. So let's take a look at it. We have four letters, y, m, x, and b. The y and the x are the coordinates um, on the point on the line. And the m stands for slope, which is like how steep the line is, um, or how unsteep. Or basically just like, think of it like, you know, you're on a road going up a hill or going down a hill. Uh, that's your slope. B is where the line crosses the y-axis. The y-axis is the up and down one, the vertical one. And I was curious why slope is M instead of S or something else and why this is B. And I spent maybe 15 to 30 seconds on Google and the answer is nobody knows and all of the the guesses are pretty dumb, so I'm not even going to go into it. But we have m is slope and b is the y-intercept, um, and that's just how it is. Sorry, everyone. It's kind of dumb. So what does this mean? Let's look at this one first, because this one's pretty simple, where the line crosses the y-axis. Well, here's our equation. y is equal to negative one-third, that's our slope, minus one, where the line crosses the y-axis. We should be able to see if the lines cross at negative one, pretty simply. Let's take a look. Um, does A cross at negative one? I know, I apologize for how small it is. I couldn't figure out how to fit these all on the screen otherwise, but um, this is zero and this is negative two. This is halfway between. So it is, boop, negative one. Boop, negative one. Ooh, not negative one. Boop, negative one. So just looking at these, we have eliminated C, it doesn't cross at negative one. It crosses it, it looks like at positive one. So we've just increased our chances. If we had to randomly guess, we're running out of time. Well, now our chances are 33% instead of 25%. Good, good job. Um, let's go back um, and think about the slope for a minute. Uh, here's my first pro tip. Um, a negative slope is always pointed down. That's if you're on the road, it's you're going downhill. And if you're going uphill, then it's a positive slope. Well, remember our equation here. This is a negative slope, negative one-third. So we would expect that the road would be going up. Um, excuse me. We'd expect the opposite of what I just said, keeping you on your toes. The road should be going down. So this one is wrong. This is like an uphill slope. We can eliminate that right away. This one is flat. Um, so that's not positive, but it's not negative either. 
Let's keep this around until the next round. Now we've at least narrowed it down to 50-50, because this one is definitely downhill. So this one could be right. This one, if I had to make a guess right now, I'd go with D, because it's more obviously downhill. But let's, let's take a deeper dive and understand why the answer is the answer that it is. Pro tip number two. If you want to check your work, you can pick a point on the line and plug it into the equation. If the equation breaks, it's wrong. So what does this mean? It means that when you look at this line, for the equation we're given, if this is the right graph, every single point on this line is going to work in the equation. It's going to, it's going to equal itself. So here's a point that's like 4, negative 1. Here's a point that's negative 2, negative 1. All these points random, wherever I put it on, the, even between the obvious points, the decimals, the fractions, it's going to work if it's on this line. So let's pick a random point. I'll pick this one because it's kind of easy to do. It's um, 1 over and 1 down. So the, the coordinate you would use is 1, negative 1. The x coordinate is first, the y is second, over 1, down 1, 1, negative 1. And if we plug this into the equation, it should work if this is the right answer. So let's see. Here's our equation. Will 1, negative 1 work? Well, remember that this 1 is the x-coordinate, so we're going to plug it in here. This is the y-coordinate. We're going to plug it in for y. And if it's the line being described, then everything should be harmonious and happy. So let's plug it in. Negative 1 is equal to negative 1 third 1 minus 1. So let's multiply negative 1 third by 1, we get negative 1 third over here. Um, everything else sort of stays the same. And then we negative 1 third minus 1 gives us negative 2 thirds. Negative 1 does not equal negative 2 thirds. Um, I sort of went a little bit fast on the algebra there, but it's pretty simple algebra. Um, and it's wrong. This is like negative 1 definitely doesn't equal negative 2 thirds. An apple does not equal an orange. So that's wrong. We, like, we know that um, the line, the flat line, can't work. So our intuition was correct. Um, just to be sure, take that off the board, we're done. We know the answer is D. And we kind of knew the answer was D um, just by knowing that this, is, this number here is the uh, y-intercept and this is the positive or negative slope. We could have basically got that right away. But... Um, Let's, let me show you what it looks like when it works, because every point on this line should make this equation work. Uh, this one looks like negative 3, 0 we could plug in, or let's pick another one. This one is 3 over and 2 down, so it's the point is 3, negative 2. We'll do the same thing we just did. Will 3, negative 2 work? Spoiler alert, do some um, basic algebra, negative 1 third times 3 is just negative 1, negative 1 minus 1, it's negative 2. Does negative 2 equal negative 2? Yes. Apples equal apples. So the answer is right. We know it's right. We've even checked it. That's basically it for how to do that um, specific question. There's a couple of other pro tips I want to give you um, that might come up that might be helpful to understand. They're sort of like shortcuts uh, that will save you some time. Pro tip number three, a slope of one is a perfect 45 degree angle. So um, this line, which is supposed to look like it's not straight up, not vertical, it's like halfway between them, that's a slope of one. Um, so y is equal to x plus b, m is just one. Um, you can recognize it because it looks like a 45 degree angle. The larger the slope, the steeper the line. I kind of snuck these absolute values in here just to make it mathematically correct. You don't have to worry about that. But basically, like, um, if you have a slope of 2 or 4 or a million, it's going to get steeper and steeper and steeper and closer and closer to a straight up and down um, slope. And on the other side, the smaller the slope, as you go below 1 and towards 0, so like 1 half, or one third, like in our equation, or one one millionth, the slope is going to get more and more gentle, um, less steep. I I used a thesaurus to find the opposite of steep to find an antonym, and it gentler was the only one that seemed to make any sense at all. Okay.
so that's like a pro tip you can recognize. If here's three different slopes, here's our slope of one right in the middle. This slope is gonna be bigger than one. This looks like a slope of two. And this slope is um, more gentle. It's gonna be less than one. It's gonna, this one is actually one third. All right, so that's just sort of like how to recognize some important useful things uh, on, on graphs when you look at them. Oh, ooh, this one was three. Looks like I can't trust my, my vision. I have to do some math, actually. Okay, um, the final super mega expert pro tip, number four, is this, that a horizontal line has a slope of zero. Anytime you see a horizontal line, m equals zero. And a vertical line doesn't have a slope of infinity. It has a slope of undefined. And there's actually another video on my channel that explains why this is that um, my colleague, Mr. Kearns, made. You can check that out if you want to go deep into why that is. But you see an up and down line, it breaks everything. If you see a side to side line, it's just a slope of zero. So here, for example, our slope is zero. Here, for our example, our slope is nope. Doesn't, doesn't work. It breaks, breaks everything. All right. That's it. Um, hopefully that is enough to get you through some straightforward y equals mx plus b slope intercept problems that you'll see on the GED um, and help you understand the mechanics and get you to speak the language, la lengua. Mm -hmm. Five years of Spanish, thank you very much, in middle school and high school, um, of equations and graphs. That's it. Good luck.